Water. K-Rock Middle Atlantic Rock Reviews, Mar Army Rock Show. I'm here with Paradrive from Lancaster, Pennsylvania in their hometown tonight. I've got Nick, Tyler, and Trevor here. Guys, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having, having us. Pleasure. So uh, these guys have a full-length record out right now, and they've got something kind of cool in the works that they're going to tell me about called The Dead Sessions. But first, um, give me a little bio of the band, a little brief history biography of the band, if you would. Sure, yeah. Um, I met Trevor when I was in high school, when I came down to this area for like a, a music camp. And from that point on, I just knew I wanted him to be my drummer and like whatever project <laughs> was going to transpire in the future. Um, so then we... Started the band the in college. Was mutual, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that well, that's nice. So then we started the band in college. Um, uh, recorded an EP, two EPs, and uh, and a full length album, Deep Alive. Um, and then recently we brought on Tyler, um, who actually recorded all of our previous releases, and um, it was just it just made the most sense to bring him on as our basis because he basically knew all the songs already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess we recorded him. You heard all the music, so and, uh, um, yeah, we we played two shows with him, uh, telling the world that he was a, a stand-in. Um, <laughs> And, and he, he was no longer a standard, he, right? Yeah, he just... <laughs> that he, didn't last long. He knocked the dick off of anything else we'd seen before, yeah. so it was pretty... Uh, we were just like, wow, this is powerful. Let's let's follow this as, as fast as we can, and we did. It's been great so far. So I kind of teased it a little bit in the your website. Tell me about the Dead Sessions for folks listening to this. What is slash are the Dead Sessions? So you want to take that one, Tyler? So the Dead Sessions were uh, a series of songs that we did at my place, Seventh Wave Studio. Um, we brought in a videographer and we just played a couple songs and uh, got some great footage and we've just been uh, putting a couple out um, as we've been ready for them. So far out uh, we have the Dead Session version of our last single Oculus as well as um, one of my favorites, Lead Blanket, which was shot in beautiful black and white. That was all Scott Hoon. Scott Hoon's work uh, is is incredible. Uh, we, we saw some of his stuff and we thought this is a very unique Wave of, well, yeah, of, of right into my next that. question. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that tune. Tell me what the tune's about, uh, the uh, Lead Blanket tune, and give me a little more about that video. Uh, I wrote the lyrics to that song. It was a song about writer's block, so I decided to troll myself and see where that got me. <laughs> and it's not the final version of that, you know, that song, but I, that's kind of the bones of it. And then it, uh, eventually, you know, some more ideas came and it turned into, turned into that. They liked it, and then uh, that incredibly dirty riff came about. And we and we spent about like three quarters of a year writing it because we thought the riff was so good we were surely going to overplay it. Um, and then we just said screw it, and then basically the riff goes to the fucking song anyways. <laughs> but uh, people like it. Uh, I, I love playing that song live. It's it's such a ripper, and we did an acoustic version on the in threes, uh, uh, sort of like we did an acoustic EP. Uh, sort of rewrote it for that, and it works great there too. So yeah, we dig it. So uh, let's talk a little bit about your full length record, uh, Deep Alive. And, uh, you know, a lot of things I think people take from that record is the lyrics and kind of the emotions in a lot of those lyrics. So do you want to talk about where those come from and whoever wants to address that? We're all broken. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate sure a little us. on that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the lyrics from that record are just about. Uh, we, we all suffer from, like, amounts of anxiety. And so just, like, trying to, like, Vocalizing that and like writing about like what that's actually feeling like um, is a major theme pro uh, across it. Uh, depression is a little, a little tidbits of that in there. Um, I think anyone who's a millennial between the ages of, you know, twenty and thirty can know exactly what we're kind of talking it's about. It's really about, about it's like we're trying to find your place in society. In, in like how the world is presented and it's it's a different world from our forefathers and our parents and um you mean old people like me <laughs> <laughs> just like other generations it's it's just this this saying. digital age is very Don't it's put it's <laughs> It's just a very different time to be alive, and it's it's very interesting trying to maneuver your way through society in a way, and also trying to treat yourself the way that you need to be treated, and dealing with those anxieties and issues and depressions that people face, and trying to 
unmask them ourselves through lyrics to try to communicate those feelings to other people. Uh, Kuji said it once, that between the three of us, there's probably like one good brain per day. <laughs> <laughs> so we very much rely on each other. I always marvel at the small size of the rock and roll world, and I noticed when, when I was prepping for this, one of the videos mentioned a, a buddy of ours, Billy England's. What's your guys... Uh, oh, yeah. So tell me about the relationship with Billy and where that reference came in on the video. Uh, uh, yeah, Baltimore. We've been playing in Baltimore more than we've been playing in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania for as long as we've been a band yeah. um, just because that was the first opportunities for shows we got through 98 Rock and Kevin Hawk. Yeah, our first yeah. show was yeah. Noise in the Basement in 2013 so that, yeah. was, that was our, our way of getting like grandfathered into that so that was the scene that we happen to have the connections in and just followed it. Through. Yeah. So just, I guess, many friends in that Baltimore music scene for you guys then going back through the years. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I grew up down in Maryland. These two cats are originally from Pennsylvania, but like I've spent my formative years down there. And it's always fun to like go back and see old friends. Well, hey, uh, throughout this year, I looked at a cool video today. Tell us a little more about Seventh Wave Studios and, and what that's got going on. So, Seventh Wave Studio is uh, the studio that I started working for a number of years ago and stuck around long enough that I took over a few years ago. And um, it's when I'm not rocking with Paradry and writing material and doing everything that we do, that's my full time thing. That's like that's my other career, the other side of me. Um, I like to work with quirky interesting out of the box type music which pairs I fit right in there and here we are all these years later but it's it's a lot of fun I get to meet a lot of really cool musicians from we've uh, done records from 20 plus different states I've lost count and I think six total countries now so it's usually a lot of very uh, very driven very independent um, musicians that like look at the state of the industry and are like you gotta be kidding me <laughs> and a lot of them are just like doing their own thing their way and we just all work together the to help each other out the first words out of my mouth every day when I wake up <laughs> <laughs> you're joking so uh, when I'm looking across your page I notice you guys I guess you always you mentioned you played a lot in Baltimore but you're branching out to Philly and you, you know you're getting around the, widening your circle a little bit I might say is that the goal is the goal to full time tour is that I mean I'm, some bands it is some it isn't. It's I mean, a bucket list thing, yeah. yeah. It's, in, it's in the plan. We just have to uh, put down the necessary groundwork we're very, for us to yeah. do that. We're very particular about the way that we, well, we've, well, we've become very particular about the way that we take shows and, and, and do that. And it, life has only gotten busier and more complicated over the past seven years that we've been together. So yeah. uh, it's seeming as like the more driven we are to do it, the likelihood of it being possible tends to go the other way, but we're hell bent on doing it. It will happen. And we've been we've had the pleasure of playing with a lot of really talented bands in the past few years especially mm -hmm. from all over the East Coast, Midwest and whatnot. And we've been making more of an effort um, later this year to try to get out of the, the local area and go visit some old friends, try some new markets, try to meet some more people and just, you know, do what we do elsewhere. Yeah, the the network that we've met is is amazing. You know, and it's for a band like us, it's kind of difficult to find bands that really mesh well. Like we're kind of used to being the, the misfit in the lineup, <laughs> uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but um, it's not, something we take into consideration when, when, when we're going to travel. <laughs> Too heavy for one show, not heavy enough for other shows. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are learning that. that. Yeah. There's some bands that have made a pretty nice uh, gig doing that over the years. You know, I can think of. So yeah, I think we're definitely. Starting yeah. to become known yeah. for the I was, I was joking my way up here. I was like, remember a little man band people made a heard of called Chevelle that might be you know kind of do that same little thing. So you yeah. never know. Sweet. Uh, sweet. <laughs> um, hey, you guys have one of the more unusual band shirts I've ever seen. I saw it down there, the uh, pair of thighs t-shirt. So do you want to get who wants to give me the story behind the pair of thighs t-shirt? So when I was in college, one of our friends was doing these like little stick figure drawings of all the kind of the college bands that we were playing with. And so he was putting them side by side, so it was us pair drive playing our instruments, and then the next panel was just a pair of chicken thighs. <laughs> um, and I, we loved it so much that we wanted to make it into a shirt, so that our uh, previous bass player, Jamie, uh, created two more panels, just uh, what, pecan pie and, and pants are dry. And pants are dry. <laughs> and now the joke has just become to not uh, just... 
not avoid telling yeah. people what our name means at yeah. all costs. <laughs> <laughs> it was never asked like, you, so don't worry about it. <laughs> no, is, no we, we've answered it, but at least in, when it comes to merch, we're just coming up with how many ideas we can sidestep the definition of our name. <laughs> and that was that was all. It was Tim, right? Who? No, it was, was it Julian, Julian, our friend. Julian. Oh no, shit. Okay, yeah. never mind. Sorry, Tim. Well, um, hey, b- before we let you get here, we're here at the Chameleon Club, you know, legendary venue in your guys' hometown, so to speak. This place. And, uh, you know, I keep seeing venues closed, Trocadero's closed, and all. Talk to me a little bit. You guys have any, like, specific memories of this club? You've been a band a long time. I'm sure you played here lots, I would yeah. guess. Yeah. Not, yeah. Maybe, not maybe as much as you'd think, but, uh, you know, we have a. Uh, we've all. Grew up seeing shows. Any there. favorite memories of either playing here or seeing somebody here? You want? You for, can for me, my I uh, one special night. I got to knock two things off my bucket list, and I, I had come to this place a lot. I had played down in the basement at uh, the Lizard Lounge a number of times, but I hadn't actually played main stage here. And um, before I was actually in the band, these guys asked me. They got a um, an opener slot for Sorority Noise and Citizen, which Sorority Noise is one of my absolute favorite bands, and it was on my list that I <laughs> wished I could have played a show with them. So I was in heaven that night. Two things <laughs> off my bucket list. I finally got to break in this stage and I got to see one of my favorite bands. I'd never gotten to see them live before either. So that was that's awesome. a night I will never forget here. Anybody else? Uh, I saw uh, Eagles of Death Metal uh, oh, wow. when they came here. Uh, it was like five months after the Bataclan thing and it was just, after it it was after wow it. Um, that's surprising they tightened up the security surprise surprise I imagine, um, yeah. but it, the place was just packed in like sardines and it was one of the best shows I had ever seen they wow. sounded great it was it was everything you'd expect from and there's something and maybe partly due to you know what had happened in Paris sure. you know yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. was no it doubt. seemed hell bent on making sure everybody was having the best time ever so it was it was the that's best that's awesome it was so yeah. good uh, yeah. uh, I saw a Circus Survive here in my last year of college and it was just like wall to wall jam packed people <laughs> and I just, I just remember seeing uh, like Anthony Green like beckon everybody to come to the front of the stage <laughs> and everybody was this close and then everybody was this close. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, everybody was just osmosing into each other it was yeah when this place get packed it, it does get packed yeah, it uh, does. so yeah so that show here is a good one so uh, hey uh, they're a pair of drive from Lancaster PA we've had Nick Tyler and Trevor here check out their uh, full length record that they got out there on iTunes and uh, go check out the videos the Dead Sessions pretty cool tunes was watching those today so uh, guys thanks for being here hey thank, thank you. you thanks so much